government to try to protect your student data because of FERPA. Uh, so the, the tie up is, uh, is significant. We actually are very close to launching a, a new platform for MyPlymouth. Visually, it's not going to be a, a big change to you, but the underlying platform is a lot better. Uh, it's going to allow us to control that kind of thing in, in much more tightly. Uh, we're seeing now we can get the timeouts pretty reliably to, to be able to last for as long as you leave your web browser open. Um, so then we do kind of push the impetus to you a little bit. Um, it won't, like Facebook, it won't stay open through browser closes, but at least while your browser's open, we're hoping that that'll, that'll remove some of that. Yeah, it's, it's even more annoying now. Like, I let someone else use my computer, and they signed in, and they put, like, never remember their password, and now the line's gone, so every time I just type it out. And I can't, and I looked at how to fix it, and I can't figure it out. And I can't yeah. prioritize, yes, and I just want to put it out. It's so cool to, like, erase everything off my Chrome and re reinstall those, like, uh, that's a setting thing in your uh, browser settings. Right. Can you help me with that at the desk? You had a question back here? Oh, it was just about the PSU alert. I had it my freshman and sophomore year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do I have to re-sign up for it? Mm -hmm. What well, we did this summer is because there were so many, there were about 5,000 entries there, and many of those entries were same student three times over, and we couldn't find the students, didn't know they were still here, so we wiped the system out, and then we sent out messages to get everybody to re-register. To date, we're only up to about 1,700 out of the 4,000 plus students. So, so sign up tonight. So Call the desk if you need help. We're there till 11.30. That's part of the uh, alertus thing that I was talking about, so we can easily notify you if we need to turn the siren on, we need to make a phone call, we need to send emails, we will have a platform that we can hit a couple buttons and, and send a message out. So. Um, I just want to get back to uh, the quality of life that was brought up. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> wireless is great, but there's still a lot of towers on campus. I have my own tower. I have no intentions of putting wireless in it. Um, and it seems that you in your own tower, desktop, desktop yeah. tower, okay. um, <laughs> that <laughs> those IT majors come with multiple computers. I know. Maybe. Um, <laughs> and CS majors, but. It seems that through the browser there's a download cap that when you go and download something it maxes out at a certain number of kilobytes per second. Last night I needed to download a driver for my new Bluetooth thing that I got. It took me an hour to download a 150 megabyte file. Mm -hmm. Typically I can remote into a computer I have at my house, download it there, and FTP it here quicker than I can download it here. I had something that's very easy to solve a lot of money. Like, e even if, you, like, it seems to cap out at about 113 kilobytes a second. Yeah. Even if you double that to, like, 250 or something around there, it seems like it would just make the world of difference. And, and it would. Yeah, so we're using, uh, we're using, like, ISDN speed right now. Oh, the same thing I saw. I had to download the driver to the browser. It took, took four. It, yeah, yeah, it took 45 minutes. <laughs> I want my graduate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did, 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 did you just not? <laughs> no, he was just not. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> FTP is another download protocol other than what your browser would use. So we should only let the IT guys be every so often. Every third question would be an IT <laughs> let me let me explain one to, to I just want to make sure I answer your question because it's it's an important one. And where we have a shared medium and that everybody uses the same pipe to go out the internet, we have to make sure that we manage that appropriately so that everybody can at least get some portion of it. What that means, unfortunately, is if you have a high bandwidth application, you're not perhaps going to get as much as you'd like or as much as would make you happy, especially when you compare it to doing some other method like going around where you FTP something back in from from an off-campus site. With that in mind, understand this, that that problem goes away if we had unlimited money to throw toward an unlimited amount of bandwidth here, but we don't. Bandwidth, when we go off-campus, is expensive, because right now we have a 250 megabyte pipe to the internet. I, I will add, though, that um, the state applied for this grant. President Obama set aside $7.2 billion for broadband and expansion. The, uh, New Hampshire, almost said New York, New Hampshire applied for a grant to expand our broadband access throughout the state and geared toward higher ed, K-12 schools, first responders, police, fire, stuff like that. New Hampshire was awarded a grant of 
$5 million with an additional $20 million match that the system's coming up with. That's starting very soon, so that means that Plymouth will get much broader pipe to the, the campus and possibly a backup pipe to the campus. So our limited 250 meg connection will be at least a gig or more. Yeah, and in fact, some parts of the city have already had it, but I, I, I need to get to a particular point here, which I think is important. The reason why you're experiencing these limitations is because we do what's called bandwidth shaping or traffic shaping on the portions of the network that, that are unresident. If we had, if we took that shaping off, which limits bandwidth to particular usage types, if we took that off, the circuit would be unusable because it would be saturated. And I know that for a fact because I've seen it happen when a piece of equipment we had to be in And all of a sudden now what should be an open pipe was now completely closed and no one could use it. And we watched our, our usage rate go from here and it spiked and it plateaued by the 100%. So where we're, what we're faced with is far more, a, a much greater demand than what we can supply if it weren't shaped and managed to some degree. So we have to apply some shaping and some management practice here. And the question then becomes to us, what is it? And how do we make everybody happy? Well, we can't make everybody happy. God knows you can never make everyone happy. So that's unfortunately a situation we're in where we have to apply some management practices. And unfortunately what it means is there's going to be circumstances where people say, God, this has got to be faster. But if we made it faster, we can't make it faster for one person. We have to make it faster for everyone who uses that medium. If we do that, then nobody will be able to use it because then it becomes saturated. Um, I just like that, as I understand it, during the day, uh, so much of our bandwidth gets allocated to academic and so much is for re academ uh, ResNet. And at night, academic gets squeezed down and it goes to ResNet. So theoretically, ResNet should go faster. However, the cap stays constant throughout the day. Because what you see is an increase in usage. Like Even we, we, we only have X for bandwidth. We can't get more right now. We have what we have, 250 max. And during the day, when folks are in class and there's fewer people sitting in their apartments and dorms using their bandwidth, then we're going to see, you know, that we're going to see percentage-wise of the available bandwidth a certain type of usage. And all of a sudden, classes are out. Everyone goes home. Usage increases. So we have to accommodate that somehow. So if the best we can achieve right now is to keep that constant, great. But understand that the usage is just dramatically increased from what you see during the day. And I understand that, but I've also been here. Look at some of these other questions. Oh, okay. You had a question. Uh, mine is more of a comment about the Michael and Morgan. Um, I know that in the past, like I've, it's when somebody didn't log off on your computer, I worked for the clock, and like I'm on their username, and they've logged out of Michael's, and then I put my username and password in, and I log in, but it's still on their, their session. It's still on their session. Or because the browser wasn't closed out. Have you, seen happen, to, have you seen that happen recently? It, like maybe two weeks ago. Yeah, that really happened to me too. Yeah. Someone used my computer and I tried to check my, my grades and like it, it showed their grades. Mm -hmm. That's same one. That was their grades. Were they better? 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 Were when you're dealing with sessions across multiple applications and many of them third party, like self service banner where you see your grades, or Moodle where you might also see your grades, you can see either location. It can be pretty complicated for us to make sure the sessions get destroyed in all of these different locations. <coughs> it's one of these kind of whack a mole situations where, um, and, and again, we, we use systems slightly differently than you do. Uh, so we'll think we have it resolved and then some weird edge case happens. So what I would encourage you to do is, is when that happens or if that happens, um, report those sorts of things to the help desk. Um, if you report them and you report them um, in a timely manner, uh, we're able to track down the logs and then go and whack that specific mole um, to carry that analogy along a, a whole lot more rapidly than, than when we're uh, when we're kind of like like hearing it in this situation. Right. Uh, we can try to go reproduce that, but um, if you had called and said, "Hey, you know, I'm on this computer and, and it just happened to my account," we're going to look at logs and see exactly what happened and, and probably fix it, you know, within the hour. But thank you. I'll have another question. Um, I live in Maryland, and my roommate last year lived in Grafton. And so, like, whenever I go to class or whatever, I bring my laptop with me. And, like, I'll open my laptop and I'll connect to wireless, and it'll, like, connect like that. 